Hi and welcome to this Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths Calculus video. In this video we're going to look about an introduction to integration. Now so as part of this video we're going to look at really just the basics of integration which will be looking at getting the antiderivatives of any expressions or functions. We're going to look at the constant of integration and we're also going to include some trigonometric functions here. So integration, it's the backward step to differentiation. So all of our operations in maths comes, come in pairs. So anything we can do, we can then undo with a different operation. So for example, if I add three, I can undo that by using subtract. So I subtract three. So let's talk about differentiation. So then we can start to understand integration. So if I wanted to differentiate x to the power of n, we would bring down the power and, and take away 1 from the power. So we end up with something like this. Um, x to the power of n is bring down the power, n, x to the power of, and then take 1 away from the power, n minus 1. So multiply by the power, reduce the power by 1. Integration is the opposite of differentiation. So we're going backwards. So instead of taking 1 away from the power, we're going to add one to the power and instead of bringing down the power and multiplying it we're now going to divide by the power so because we're reversing it the way we do it is reversed as well so first of all we increase the power then we divide by the power so x to the power of n we then add one to the power so it becomes x to the power of n plus one and then we divide by the power which is n plus one so our final answer is x to to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. So this is integration. So this is the basic form. So this is if we're dealing with an x to a power and this is the most basic rule. So when we're dealing with any kind of polynomials, differentiation and then integrating back. So this is how our integration will look. And this symbol is used to show we are integrating. So this is our integral here. It's a stretched out S and it tells us what to integrate. And then it includes this DX to tell us what to apply the rules to. So if we were differentiating Y, the, diff the derivative would be dy dx. So differentiate y and then the dx is with respect to x. So x is the thing you do the rule to. So when we're integrating, all of these like integral signs have a dx, which is telling us what to apply the rule to. So we're integrating the function here with respect to x. So if we were to work this, how would we do it? Well, we're following our rule of add one to the power, then divide by the power. So if we were to just take this for a second, so I have differentiated something and my answer is x squared. So if I want to figure out, well, what was the original y? We're working backwards. So this is where I would integrate. So if we were actually to do this, and maybe you're thinking already that we add one to the power and divide by three. So this is what we started with. OK, so that is integration. We added one to the power and divided by the power. So if we are told what the derivative is, this is how we work backwards. However, and this is a big important piece that you need to know for integration. I could have said, well, actually, no, that wasn't what I started with. Maybe I started with this below. So let's look at the y here for a second. y equals x cubed divided by 3 plus 2. If we were to differentiate this, and I know I'm jumping between differentiation and integration, but it's because it's so circular. One is the opposite of the other. dy dx is bring down your power take one away from your power and then this will cancel but the constant disappears and that's going to pose a little bit of a problem for us in integration because we are stuck we think mm, maybe there was a constant here that did disappear maybe it was a plus two maybe it was a minus five 
we don't know. So when we're integrating, we need to be very, very mindful of the fact that any constant that originally existed has now disappeared. So how do we account for that? So what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called the constant of integration. And it's a plus C that generalizes our answer. So here, if I said, what happens when I integrate X squared with respect to X? The answer is not simply X cubed over three, but X cubed over three plus C plus some constant. Now, maybe that constant was zero. Maybe that constant was 10. Maybe it was minus three. We don't know. In some questions, they'll give us information to figure that out. And we'll see some examples of those. But if they don't, we need to include that plus C to make sure our answer is correct. So on page 27 of your log tables, we're given some rules of integrals. Now we're going to focus here on the first rule. Um, there's a lot of extra information here that is not really required. Integration by parts is no longer on the course. We're really going to focus on just my first box here. We'll do a little bit on the others. But for this video, we're just going to look at the first box. Um, and here we have x to the power of n. And when we integrated, we get x to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1. So the rule is there if you forget, but it's important that you know how to work quickly with any x to a power in integrating. Just to be aware, this doesn't work when n is equal to negative 1. And that is because when you add 1 to the power, the power will be 0. Dividing by 0, we cannot. It's not possible. So um, that will be dealt with, and I'll show you how we work with that instead. So let's do an example of an indefinite integral. When we deal with the constant of integration, we call this the indefinite integral because although we have a plus C to stand for the constant, we don't know what that constant is. So it's not the definite answer, okay? So if you ever see anything about indefinite, it means we're going to have that plus C. So this is going to be add one to the power, so that's x cubed, then divide by the power, plus 4x add one to the power, it becomes squared, divide by the power, and then add one to the power. Now, if I have a 5, really what's here is a 5x to the power of 0, because x to the power of 0 is 1. So really what happens with any constant is we add an x and the power is really a one. So any constants, we just add an x onto them, plus there was possibly a constant that then disappeared. Let's tidy this up. x cubed plus 2x squared plus 5x plus c, and that's my answer. Let's look at a slightly more challenging one. So here we have a fraction. Now, when we were differentiating, we had the product rule and the quotient rule. We have no such rules for integration. Our integration is a lot more basic. So if you have a fraction, you need to simplify that fraction before you do anything. So aside, I'm gonna take this fraction and I'm going to work with it and simplify using factors. So we have x cubed minus 4x over x. Highest common factor on the top line leaves us with x squared minus 4 over x. These cancel. So this is the same as integrating x squared minus 4 dx and we use a bracket because we want all of this affected by the dx so then integrating that gives me add one to the power divide by the power and then the constants and x just adds on plus my constant because there is possibly a constant that disappeared when we differentiated and that's my final answer so now we have a more complex one. We have an x cubed plus 1 over x squared plus root x. Now, 
two things here that needs to change before we work with our integrals. And again, very similar to what we saw in differentiation. The first is this. We can't have fractions where there is the power underneath the line. We're going to use our rules of indices to change that. And square roots the same. I want to write that as a power. So everything should be written as x to a power. So this will become, right, x cubed doesn't need to change. Um, 1 over x squared, if I bring that above the line, the sign of the power changes, so that's plus x to the power of minus 2, so that's one of our rules of indices. Uh, square root of x is x to the power of a half, and now I have everything as x to a power, so now I can apply my rule of, in my rule of integration to each piece. So I add one to my power, divide by the power. I add one to the power, and I'm careful. Minus two plus one is minus one, and I divide by my power, and then I add one to my power. Now you might want to use your um, calculator to help. So that's three over two, and we divide by three over two, or if you want to use one and a half underneath the line, but for our powers, you keep it to a top heavy fraction. So now, <coughs> excuse me, now we want to clean up. We get x to the power of 4 over 4. That's as tidy as we can get it. Dividing something by a negative 1 just changes its sign. So this becomes minus. Now, x to the power of minus 1, we can rewrite using fractions as 1 over x to the power of positive 1, which is just 1 over x. Now, for this last piece, I'm going to work it over here for you to see it. As you get used to doing these, you might do it a little bit quicker, but I'll do it out in full here. So when I'm dividing um, by a fraction, so divided by 3 over 2, and this is over 1, instead what I do is I actually multiply by its reciprocal. So I flip it. So this turns into 2x to the power of 3 over 2 over 3. So that's what it will look like. I also need to do a little bit of work on the x to a power here. So I have plus 2 over 3. Now, focusing on this x to the power of 3 over 2, um, using my rules of indices, that's actually the square root of x cubed. And that's my final answer. So we would always give our answers. Now, I actually forgot the one thing, the plus c to throw in here at the end. It's really important when you're giving your answer that we don't give any negative powers, that we don't give any fractional powers. We should always give it back the way we've got it, which is positive powers and square roots, cube roots, whatever way it is. And don't forget your plus C. As they get more complicated, you can see how easy it is to drop that plus C. Um, I would say make sure you put it into the second step. But as long as by the end of it, you've remembered, that's important. So that plus C, that constant, that could have been there at the end. So now let's look at another example of working with these indefinite integrals. So here I have another piece, but I have multiplication. And like I said in the last example, for integration, it's very, very straightforward. We don't have a product rule. We don't have a quotient rule. So it's important that anything we have is simplified into just a normal expression, an expanded expression without fractions before we move forward. So first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to change the x squared, or sorry, the root x, to an x to a power. It's going to make multiplication just a little bit easier. So x to the power of a half by x plus 4, and this is dx. So that is the same as x to the power of a half by x to the power of 1. When you're multiplying, you add your powers. So that is 3 over 2 plus 4 x to the power of a half dx. Now I can apply my rules of integration. So I add one to my power, so that becomes 5 over 2, and I divide by my power. 
plus add 1 to my power. So that becomes 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2. And then we have our constant as well. In our last example, we worked through the long way of working with fractions underneath the line. I'll show you a little shortcut now. How it works is the bottom of the fraction comes up. So it's 2 x to the power of 5 over 2 over 5 plus um, it'll be 2 comes above the line. So 2 by 4 x to the power of 3 over 2 all over 3 plus my constant. If you're not sure about that again, remember we're dividing by a fraction. To divide by a fraction, I instead multiply by its reciprocal. I flip it. And uh, the last thing I need to do then is convert these x to the power back to something a little bit more user friendly, which will be square root of x to the power of 5 for the first one. Plus, now 2 by 4 is 8, simplify that. It's going to be the square root of x cubed over 3 plus c. So let's look at how we would find the constant of integration. So we've been putting in our plus c and leaving it there, meaning we are doing what's called the indefinite integral and we're getting a general answer. It's not going to be fully accurate because we don't know what that constant is. In some questions, they'll give us information which we can use to then find the constant of integration and find the specific answer rather than this general answer. So the curve of the equation y equals f of x passes through the point two zero. So that's going to be important. Okay, so my original function f of x passes through two zero. If f dash of x, so the, de the derivative of f is 3x squared minus 1 over x squared, find f of x. So if we go f, <clears throat> excuse me, so if we do f of x, 2 f dash of x, that's differentiation. If we do f dash of x back to f of x, that's integration. Okay, so there's my differentiation. Here's my integration. So here they want us to set up integration. So I'm going to integrate the function, which is 3x squared minus 1 over x squared, and it has to have, remember, a dx. When I do that, or before I do that, I need to just do a little bit of work on the second term. x squared um, under the line becomes x to the power minus 2 above the line. Now I apply my rules of um, integration. So it's 3x add 1 to the power is 3, divide by my power. Here I add 1 to my power, just be careful with the negatives, minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1, divide by my power, which is minus 1, plus my constant. So tidying that up, that actually gives me the answer for f of x. So f of x is um, the 3's cancel, I get x cubed, my sign changes, so that's x to the power of minus 1, which is 1 over x plus c. Now that plus c was fine in my other questions because I wasn't given any other information. However, I know that this function passes through the point two zero. So what I know is the x value is the x value is two when the y value is zero. So I can sub that in. So when I sub in two, so remember f of x is another way to say y. So 0 equals 2 cubed plus 1 over 2 plus c. And now I can actually work out a value for c. So c is equal to when I added, so 2 to the power of 3 is 8, 8 and a half. So c is minus 8 and a half, which is minus 17 over 2, if you prefer it in fractions, which means my final function, f of x, and I'll put it up here. So my final function, f of x, is going to be x cubed plus 1 over x 
plus, and you can write your constant whatever way you want. Oh, sorry, it's a minus, but you can write this whatever way you want. I'm going to write uh, 17 over 2. Another way is minus 8.5. I'm not a fan of mixed fractions. Um, you could write maybe minus 8.5. Any of those will give us the correct answer. So by getting that extra piece of information, we're now able to replace that constant of integration, that plus C, with an actual value that gives us then a specific function. So the next section of formulae here, which really are working with exponentials, logs and it's a to the power of x so where x is actually in the power and you just need to be really careful there so that's like three to the power of x so how we would work with that and um, again integration is quite straightforward in what it asks and we just need to be able to follow our rules what i would say about one over x you need to be very careful with that if i brought that above the line that becomes x to the power of minus one and we were told in that first formula that n cannot equal minus one so there is a specific rule for when i have x to the power of minus one and that is one over x and it then goes to the log ln is natural log of the absolute value of x and um, e to the power of x E is that specific number, it's Euler's number. So e to the power of x integrates to e to the power of x, which shouldn't surprise you because e to the power of x differentiates to e to the power of x. However, if it's e to the power of something x, so 3x, it becomes 1 over 3 e to the power of 3x. Now, that a is not the coefficient, and I know it looks like the coefficient, but what it actually is, it's the derivative. So when you differentiate ax, you'll get a and that's why we divide by a that'll make a difference if it's something like 2x squared in the power um other than that these are quite straightforward let's look at an example so here is finally antiderivative so antiderivative is another word that can be used for the when we integrate so anti is obviously the opposite so antiderivative so when you find the derivative you've differentiated so antiderivative you're going backwards so we're going to be doing an indefinite one here because it's plus c. There's nothing to get rid of that constant of integration. So e to the power of 4x integrates to e to the power of 4x. And then you divide by the derivative of the power. So we're going to divide by 4. And it is the derivative of the power. Plus 6x. Um, we're going to integrate that. It becomes 6x squared divided by the power is 2. So we add 1 to the power divided by the power plus c and then we'll clean this up. e to the power of 4x over 4 plus 3x squared plus c. Now let's look at some trigonometric functions. If you're integrating trigonometric functions, I think that this page is not sufficient because it only deals with the easiest ones. So cos x, sin x, tan x, and not what happens if we have a coefficient of the x. So just be careful. If we talk about differentiating sine and cos, we would have also had to work with a chain rule of sorts. And this is the one place where you have to be just extra vigilant in integration because we have to then kind of apply the chain rule in reverse. Now, here are the formula and it basically means if I integrate, um, I'll use my highlight to see where, if I integrate cos of x, it goes to sine of x plus a constant. But if I integrate cos of something x, I end up sine of that divided by m, where m is the derivative of mx. Again, it looks like the coefficient, but it's the derivative. So you divide by the differentiation. It's a version of that chain rule. We see it when we integrate e to the power of ax, but because we have that extra line in the log tables to help us, it's a little bit easier. Sine of x integrates into minus cos of x. Really watch your signs here as well. But sine of mx integrates to minus cos of mx divided by m with the plus c at the end. So find the integral of cos for x and that will be cos goes to sine. So sine of 4x, that doesn't change. 
but then we have to take account for the fact it was a 4x and not just an x and divide by the derivative of 4x which is simply 4 and then we add a c so sine of 3x sine goes to minus cos the 3x stays but again we need to take account of the fact that it wasn't just an x it was a 3x so we divide by the derivative of 3x and what i mean by derivative is when you differentiate 3x it becomes 3. so if that was something more complicated like an x squared it wouldn't just be the coefficient it is the derivative so always think in terms of the derivative and then you won't go wrong